How's it going everybody? Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer, we install, test, and review a lot of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before you purchase. Today we're going to be working on a 2018 Coachman Leprechaun. We're going to be taking a look at and I'll be walking you through how to install the Seaflow diaphragm pump. Our diaphragm pump is going to be commonly referred to as a water pump. This is going to pump all of our fresh water to our sinks, our showers, and our toilets. So we do have our factory pump installed right now and it is functioning properly. Let's jump inside and get a test. The test that we're gonna be doing is gonna be filling up this 28 ounce bottle. Now this is gonna be a great test because whenever we're outside on the trails or anything like that or just hanging out, we're gonna be filling up drinks quite often. So this is gonna be a really good test to see how fast our water comes out. Now we're gonna use our factory pump. We'll set that under here, start our timer and turn the water on. And with that full, our timer was right at just about 10 seconds. And then with our old pump, we just want to get a feeling with our hand. So we'll turn that on. We do have decent water pressure, but it could definitely be upgraded. And we're now ready to do that same water bottle test with our new pump. So it actually is a little bit faster than our old pump, even though it is the same ratings. And this is probably just due to the fact that it's brand new. And we do have quite a bit more pressure. Now let's head in the bathroom and check that out as well. Now in the bathroom, this is personally where I noticed the biggest difference between our old pump and our new pump. We have our new pump installed now, so we'll flip on our sink. And we have quite a bit of pressure. This is gonna be just like your water pressure at home. And it's the exact same in the shower. And that's really why we want to get a new pump anyways, because the shower pressure is what really makes a difference. Our water pump is going to be one of those crucial items whenever we're out camping or just on the road or anything like that. And you're definitely going to notice if it fails, because whenever you go to use that sink, you're not going to have any pressure, thus you're not going to have any water. Now, in our customer's case, he just wanted to replace this water pump for one that had a little bit better pressure. Here is what our pump is going to look like installed. Now it is going to be hidden behind some panels, but we'll explain how to remove those in the installation portion. Now our water pump is going to allow us to have that fresh water with a good even flow. This does use variable flow technology, so that means if you have your faucet on halfway, it's going to give you half of the full pressure, just like it would at home. We are going to have a self-priming design, so this is going to keep our air from binding. It's going to be a lot easier to get the air out of our lines whenever you get this thing set up. This does use a four chamber diaphragm, so that's gonna allow us to have a really high water flow with up to four fixtures. A common way that you guys will actually end up burning up your water pump is by running it dry. Just because we don't always check how much water is in our fresh water tank, it's a very common mistake. Now, no need to worry with this one. This can be run dry due to the heavy duty motor. So that's just gonna give you that extra peace of mind whenever you're out there camping or on the road. Our pump is gonna have heavy duty rubber feet this is going to keep all that extra vibration from being able to be felt whenever we're using the water. The flow of our pump is going to be three gallons per minute. So that's going to be how much water is coming out of our faucet, our toilet, or our shower. Now we are going to have a max PSI rating of 55 pounds, and honestly that's pretty high. That's touching up onto what you would have at home. So whenever you're out taking a shower in your camper, you're not going to have to worry about the water pressure being low, ruining our shower experience. And now we are gonna have a max temperature of 140 degrees. So you just wanna keep that in mind. I mean, that's pretty high. Most of the time we're not gonna need that. A lot of times we're doing stuff around 100 degrees if we're using the sink in the kitchen. Now moving inside, we wanna make sure that we have our water pump switched on and we can turn on our faucet. As you can see, that water is coming out of there pretty good. It's just like it is at home. Now, one thing I would like to mention is our pump is pretty noisy. So you just wanna keep that in mind. And it is pretty noisy just due to the fact that we do have such a high PSI rating. All in all, this is a really nice water pump. It's very nice to have that really high pressure rating. It's just gonna give us all those creature comforts of home when we're out on the road. Now, in terms of installation, getting this guy installed really isn't too bad. It's a direct replacement for our factory pump. It's most definitely something that you guys could do at home. That being said, let's take a look at the installation together now. To begin our installation, we need to empty out our water pump and our hot water heater. Now, to do that, we're gonna need to come to our rear basement panel here on the driver's side, and we'll pop this open. Once we get this opened, we're gonna have a couple wall panelings. We're gonna have one here and one on this side. I went ahead and already took those screws out because more likely than not, you've already done this to winterize your camper. So once you get this panel taken off, 
you make you want to make sure to disconnect that light that's on that panel and then we're going to take this side panel off for our low drain point and just behind that panel there you can see that valve we want to shut that valve off that's going to be the valve that comes from our water tank into our water pump then we want to run that pump dry so we'll come inside flip on our water pump switch then open up a faucet or two and just run that till there's no more water i went ahead and already did that but it is going to be pretty simple to do at home we then want to come outside to our water heater we're going to have our drain pipe here or drain plug i should say we'll get that removed from this spot here you'll use a 7 8 socket then we'll come up to this air valve and we'll shift that open just so that the water flows out a little bit smoother now we went ahead and already got that dry because it does take a little while with that dry we'll just close this valve and we're ready to take out our old pump we now want to put some towels down underneath of our pump that way when we disconnect everything we don't get water in the floorboard now i'm going to use microfiber towels because those just soak up water a little bit better but really you can use a bath towel or really anything that you have at home available on our pump we're going to have two fittings we're going to have one that comes out of this filter and then one on the other side we just want to unthread these we will get a little bit of water seepage just because of the way everything drains it's impossible to get all of our water out of the lines but what you can do is kind of grab that and turn it up and then zip tie it to something to keep that vertical we'll remove that other side the same way when you look at the wiring for our old pump we're going to have our ground wire and our power wire we just want to snip those now we can now remove our old pump and to do this, there's going to be four screws that are bolted down to the floor. We're going to use a square number two bit to get those taken out. Now it is kind of tight down here, so getting a low clearance screwdriver is definitely something I would recommend. Now we just want to grab our pump, kind of lift that out of place. You want to make sure to hold on to your stock hardware because we will be reusing it. With our pump out, we now want to grab some more towels, come back and just wipe up any residual water that we might have missed from underneath the pump because we don't want that to get all moldy and create a bad smell. We now want to install our filter. We want to make sure it's going in the same flow as the stock one. So you can just refer to your stock pump. So we just want to screw this on here. We don't want to over tighten it. We just want to get that nice and hand tight. Just like so. We are now going to take our factory bolts and just thread that through the mounting feet then all we're going to do is do this for all four bolts and then set it into position aligning with our factory factory holes and we'll come back and tighten it down you want to make sure that you have easy access to your wiring that way once we get this bolted down making our wiring connections it's going to be a little bit easier we now have all of our bolts tightened down the mounting plates are rubber so they're going to flex a little bit that way whenever the pump kicks on it doesn't vibrate but you want to make sure that those feet aren't moving when you shake the pump. And in this case, we're all tightened down and good to go. So we're just going to take our water lines and reconnect that to our new pump, just how we took them off of our old one. And luckily, in our case, these threads were the same size. But if yours do vary at home, you can find the according adapters to make this work here at E-Trailer. We'll repeat that same process on the other side. For our wiring, we're going to be connecting our red wire to our red wire and our white wire to the black wire behind our pump. It is kind of tight back there, but you're going to follow the same process. We're going to start by stripping back the ends. Then we can grab a heat shrink butt connector. You want to make sure to use heat shrink just because there is water involved. We don't want any corrosion. You can find heat shrink butt connectors here at E-Trailer. And I did trim this back a little far, so we're just going to trim that off now. Give that a little twist. We're just going to add that to the other side of our butt connector. We'll repeat that exact same process for the white wire. We then just want to come back with our heat source and shrink it down. We now want to add some electrical tape just to help ensure a good connection. We now want to come up to our control panel. We're going to flip on our water pump and we can hear that kick on. 
and you do want to make sure to check for leaks. In this case, we're good, so we can reinstall everything and fill it back up with water. In the reverse order, we took everything apart. We now have our city water connected. We're waiting on our hot water tank to heat up, but first we need to turn on our water pump on our switch panel, and we're going to come to our faucet and turn on our hot water. And we're going to wait for all that air to get blown out of our system. As you can see, the water's kind of coming out in spurts. Once we get all those bubbles out, we'll have a nice smooth stream. And once your water smooths out, you know you're good to go. Now we are going to be joined with some of our riders here at eTrailer just to ask some more questions and maybe compare this to some other pumps out there on the market. So feel free to hang out and check that out. So you said that this was being replaced, but the, the old pump was still working pretty well? That's correct. And then just between my old one and this one, this one is a little bit noisier, but that's just because you can run up to four faucets. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool though. Whenever we're using it inside, you could have multiple faucets on and even turn the shower on and try to faucet as well. And a lot of times the water pressure will deplete whenever you're using a camper. And it's honestly just about the same as it would be if you were only using one faucet. The, the factory water pump in there before, how many faucets could it run? Um, it didn't say right on it. I just know that I could read this off of the product page, but judging off the uh, pressure we were getting with two sinks on, probably one or two. Now this this was a variable flow, right? So it it can you can adjust to see how how fast or slow the water comes in. Like it's not just on or off. Is that right? Um, it is variable flow, but basically that's however high you have the faucet turned on. So it's just like at home if you have the faucet barely on, you're going to get a little bit of pressure. But the more pressure you give that faucet, the more water pressure you're going to get. This one comes with a strainer, right, to kind of keep the debris from getting into the water. Did the old one have? Yeah, the uh, filter is right here, and the old one had the exact same thing. I guess I had a quick question. This may be stupid, but I guess in terms of um, using this for, like, a faucet, um, I just was curious if there's any, like, downsides or any other issues you kind of ran into, whether it, it came to installation or hooking it up to the faucet or, you know, getting them to work together. Um, I mean, the only downside I can think of is it's a little noisier. But it was pretty easy to install. It didn't take that long once we figured out the right pump. Was this one, was it bigger than the old pump? Like, does it take up more space when it's kind of tucked away back there? I'm just kind of, just a size. Um, the top of this one's a little bit taller. I think that's just because the diaphragm's stronger on this one. But really, it doesn't take up that much more room. And then it has nice rubber feet as well. That way, when it is kicking on, it doesn't vibrate everything. Yeah, so there'll be no rattling or anything. Or, right. Know, and then if I get my hand in here, you can see the pump actually moves because those feet flex. And that's what keeps it from really vibrating. You know, you get the rubber on the floor, and then it can shake a little bit on its own. Yeah, the wiring was the exact same, so that's really nice, too. That's going to be great for everybody doing it at home. Yeah, it just had, you just hardwired it. This one doesn't have a plug, right? Right. This one just has one power wire and one ground wire. Gotcha. And then all the fittings from our factory lines fit right onto these as well, so that's that's super nice. No leaks or anything? No, we haven't had a single drop yet. I know three uh, three gallons per minute is kind of standard, just from what everything I found. But what really stood out to me on this one was just the higher PSI rating. I mean, 55 is pretty darn high. Now with everything reinstalled and all the air out of our lines, we know we're ready to hit the road. That's going to do it for our look at and our installation of Seaflow's diaphragm pump on our 2018 Coachman Leprechaun.